Hi all, I just wanted to do a quick um, video on how to do some of the radiology math problems that we are um, going to be working on together. So knowing how to do the word problem, you have to know the key players, right? So what is your controlling factor for subject contrast? And we know, right, that that is um, KVP, right? And then your controlling factor for receptor exposure, that is going to be MAS. Do grids affect um, your factors? Contrast, yes. And receptor exposure, yes. Will distance affect your factors? Receptor exposure will be a yes. And then contrast will be a no. So knowing that is important. All right, so I'm going to move on. Our first question here deals with, um, it's asking you for the groups of factors that will produce the shortest scale of contrast. What is our key player for contrast? If you said KVP, you are correct. So it is giving you MA and time. Do I care about MA and time for contrast? No, MAS has no effect on contrast. So ignore it, it's called a distractor. It's there for fun, just to bother you. Um, and then, so for shortest scale of contrast, is low KVP short scale or is high KVP short scale? Well, if you said, Megan, it is low KVP, gives me a short scale of contrast, you would be winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay, so 66 KVP is our lowest KVP of the options. That is going to give me my shortest scale of contrast. Ignore anything that has no effect. All right. Question two is asking me now for the longest scale of contrast. So we're going in the opposite direction. Again, I have MA and time selections. Do those have any effect on my contrast? No, absolutely they do not. So ignore it. Put your X there. Just pretend it doesn't exist. All right, four, long scale of contrast. Remember, long scale is your big elephant. Do you want high KVP or low KVP? Well, if you said high KVP gives me long scale of contrast, you would be correct. So looking at these four options, the 105 KVP is the highest option that you have, and that gives you the longest scale of contrast. All right, number three, I threw a little bit more fun in the mix here. It's again asking me for a longest scale of contrast. So, friends, do we care about MAS for contrast? No, no, we don't. So ignore the mass. Do I can care about KVP for contrast? Yes, yes I do. Long scale of contrast, is that high or low? High. The trick here is there's two with 95 KVPs. Those are both high KVP, they're gonna give me a long scale of contrast. But now I have a grid factor. So remember, grid factors, the higher the grid, the more lead lines. The more lead lines, the more scatter it cleans up, the more improves the contrast of your image. So the 12 to 1 grid is going to block more scatter than the 8 to 1 grid. The more scatter on your image, the longer scale of contrast, there's going to be more gray. So the answer for this one is C, because it gives me a long scale of contrast with my 95 and it doesn't clean up as much scatter. The eight to one is not as efficient as a 12 to one grid, all right? Now, moving on. I know I'm going fast, sorry. Greatest receptor exposure. Okay, so what is the controller for receptor exposure? What's your primary controller for receptor exposure? Mass, you are correct. So for these, you have to calculate out the mass. So you have to do the MA times time. And I'm going to tell you what these are because three are the same. And one is different. So these three answers come out to 15. The last answer comes out to 16. Okay. Greatest receptor exposure means highest mass. The highest mass, the highest receptor exposure. So my number, or my answer is four, because that's my highest mass. It also is the highest KVP, 
PDP does have an effect on receptor exposure. Not as great as MAS, but it does have an effect. So higher KVP will also increase my receptor exposure. It goes back to the 15% rule, but we won't travel there yet, all right? So that's the answer for that one. So greatest receptor exposure, look for the greatest MAS. So you will have to calculate these out unless you're really good with math in your head, which I'm not. Um, okay, so number five, which of the following factors will produce the greatest amount of receptor exposure? Again, what am I looking for here? MAS is my main controller. So that's what I'm gonna look for first. I'm gonna calculate out my mass. So this one is three. This one is 12. This one comes out to six. And the last one is six. So I have three mass, 12 mass, six mass, six mass. Then I also have some SIDs. So source to image distance. Will this have an effect on my receptor exposure? Yes, but they're all the same. So they're just there for fun, just to distract you. Greatest receptor exposure, highest MAS is your option, okay? Moving down, I think the last one I have here. So this one is asking me for least receptor exposure. So I'm gonna go back to your um, MAS numbers here. So it's the same MAS numbers that I just used for the first one, just to make our lives easier here. So it's three, 12, um, six, and six. What factor has changed though? I now have a two with 72 inch options. So the question is asking me for least receptor exposure. That means lowest mass, which automatically I'm going here to the number three. But then I just have to double check that my SID is also a player. So lowest mass with an increased SID, this A is gonna give you the least amount of receptor exposure. Okay. So you have to know what the controlling factors are for you to answer these questions. And you also have to know what has no effect on these factors. If you know that MAS has no effect on contrast, that is there for a distractor. You might see focal spot size. So it might say here 1.2 millimeter focal spot size. Does focal spot size have an effect on my contrast? No, no it does not. Okay, what affects contrast? KVP and grits. Right? What affects receptor exposure? Primarily mass. KVP is a player, but it's not proportional. It affects it by the 15% rule. So it is a possible addition. All right. So if you can, I know on computerized tests, you guys can't put your red X in. All right. But cover it up with your hand. Put your hand up there and say, I'm not going to look at that. I know it doesn't involve me. As soon as I see receptor exposure, or if you're doing an older test, it might say density. Density is an old film term that you're not gonna use anymore, okay? But you'll see it as receptor exposure. As soon as I see receptor exposure, I go MAS, okay? I think of KVP and MAS as the radiology Super Bowl here. You have two teams. You have contrast on one side, team one, and receptor exposure, team two. And their team captains, all right, our KVP and MAS. So KVP is the team captain for contrast and MAS is the team captain for receptor exposure, okay? They play on separate teams, all right? They don't play often in the same sandbox unless KVP is playing with receptor exposure, but it's not your main factor. Anytime it says greatest receptor exposure, calculate out your mass. Go with the biggest MAS. If these were both 16, say I had a 16 and a 16, I would definitely still stay with this one because of the 95 KVP will give me more receptor exposure than the 66 KVP, just for an example. Okay, uh, again, watch for the SIDs. 
So shorter SID, closer to the patient, gonna give you more receptor exposure. 72 inches further away, least receptor exposure. All right, gang, I hope that was helpful.